This is the farthest north I've ever been. Farther north than I went in Iceland. So I'm really amazed when I, I found. I think it's the only one in the world. He's got something interesting for me to try. Tell me about this. This is whale. At the end of the road, at the top of the world, on the edge of the earth, is the most remote settlement in North America, accessible by road. There, on the Arctic Ocean, hundreds of miles above the Arctic Circle, is the hamlet of Tuktoyaktuk, in the northwest territories of Canada. A community of indigenous people, and a few transplants. It's a place where the ancestors hunted polar bears and seals, caribou and the occasional whale, to survive. It's a place of those who have been before, the ancient ones, once referred to as Eskimos, but now known as Inuvialuit, or other native people, depending on their lineage. About 900 people live in this isolated community, where the tundra meets the sea, a sea that freezes solid every winter. And when it does, it's possible to see the occasional polar bear wandering about town. It seems a place more habitable, to the great white bears than humans, as temperatures can plunge to, on occasion, minus 50 degrees. Tuck became accessible by road only recently when the Dempster Highway was extended from Inuvik in 2017. Prior to that, it was only accessible by plane or boat. That is, until winter arrived and the land froze, enabling an ice road to be created. Entering Tuck is like entering another world, both culturally and from a stance of a different natural environment. It's a place of extremes not only in temperature, but also in the seasons. During summer, there is continuous daylight for about two months up here in the land of the midnight sun. And in winter, total darkness envelops the land for about a month. And there is a remoteness few have experienced. Tuck is in the land of the Pingos, which are ice-filled earthen cones, imperceptibly rising. Canada is home to the second tallest Pingo in the world, at about 150 feet high. Some of the cones are a thousand years old. Welcome to Tuck, the town of Tuck de Yuck Tuck. Formerly known as Port Brabant, Tuck de Yuck Tuck was renamed in 1950, the first place in Canada to revert to a traditional native name. The name translates to resembling a caribou and was considered a prime fishing location as well as a harvesting site for Tuktu, what we know as caribou. According to legend, a woman looked on as some caribou waded into the water and turned into stone. Today, reefs resembling these petrified caribou are said to be visible at low tide along the shore of the town. Where Tuck is now situated, it was established as a permanent settlement in 1905, due in part to its proximity to a sheltered boat harbor. There is a store here in Tuck, but it might cost you a few extra pennies. Post office is inside the store. But don't plan on getting gas here, as the pumps aren't working anymore. Some gas there, might get some of that. Looks like a peat moss house. Let's go inside the sod house and have a look. Alright, come on in here. Maybe I'll light a corner for you. I'll light a traditional light for you. Thank you. Okay. Great, thank you so much. So he's going to go ahead and light the lamp here. It's a traditional type lamp. He just slowly spread his way around on his set. Yeah, I have a little beluga whale here. The whale that I use for the lamp. And the belugas are just offshore. Sometimes you can see them just right from here off the shore. Yeah, yeah do what you like. Okay. Do what you wish. Thank you. And this is the... Got the fish here being dried. And this is the whale, the lamp. And back here, I have some skins. And a few more skins over here. So this is a look inside the sod house. So three or four families would traditionally live inside here. Yeah. And this is this is mainly for tourists yeah. now. Yeah, 
There a long time ago they would use that thing for a cooler. It's just all imitation stuff. Yeah. Here. But this one here, there's a one, maybe you want to take a picture. It's just a rubber, rubber oil and just like the muck, muck that they call it. Yeah. With the oil, you know? Yeah, the muck tuck. Yeah. The muck tuck is the beluga whale. Yeah. And this, these are lake trout. Lake trout, Lake. one large, one small. I'm telling you what the men used to use to make these for their uh, tools to carry around. They made fish pins. That's from a beluga, yeah, yeah. and the meat, right. meat also, yeah. And uh, one dry fish over there for drying fish, yeah. Example, and they would have a large cooking pot, larger cooler than that. It's just a demonstration type. They they would use this for their wick. This is Arctic Arctic cotton that you find on the land anywhere, and it's actually the wick for the land. This yeah. was the cotton grass. Here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's the cotton that's, grass. Yeah, the it's wick. very good for wick because it it doesn't create any smoke, mm -hmm. you know at all. It burns pretty nicely. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So no smoke at all with yeah. the cotton grass. And this is like what a beluga whale yeah, that's looks a little, like. Uh, little beluga. Tiny beluga. Uh, them little. Of course, they're much yeah. larger in real life. Yeah, that's what I use for the lamp. I made it one time and I didn't know what to use it for. <laughs> <laughs> so you, car you carved that? Yeah. So your grandfather was Jorgensen, yeah. a Swedish man, yeah. and he came I here from Sweden. Yeah, yes. And my and my grandmother was an Inuvialik Eskimo from the north, like in copper mine they call it. He got married to an Eskimo lady, and he had five five children, three sons and two daughters. Yeah, and my father was one of the one of his sons, and I had other couple more uncles and aunties, yeah. They actually have a book about Klingenberg of the Arctic, yeah, so that's interesting background. And your Very grandfather lived in a house just like this? Yeah, yeah, on, on his way, on his way out east and go all the way back south again, down to Vancouver to get supplies. He used to supply the Eskimos with whatever they need way back then and oh. trade for fur. I would, when your grandfather was living in a place like this, it would have been around 1910 or so? Oh, no, 19? early 1940s. Okay. 1940s, oh, yeah. right up into yeah. the 1940s. Yeah. yeah, after the war was over, 1944, 43. This was built in 1998, and it's to show people how the ancestors lived. So the ancestors survived by eating seal and polar bear meat. Yeah, yes, yes, when there was no, even before the caribou, yeah. So there was a time when there was yeah, no caribou here. Yeah, uh, seal meat and a fish, they would fish with seal, fish on pol live on polar bear meat, seal and fish, and then afterwards they get caribou when the caribou come, yeah, they would all go hunting caribou. Were there any years when the caribou wouldn't come at all? Oh yeah, they, they, had, they had plenty of shields, they knew where to go, they knew where to go, you know. To find the caribou. Yeah, they, go, yeah, yeah. they knew where to go, yeah. They would walk on forever and ever, you know, till they find their animals that they want to survive on. Do people still eat muktuk? Oh yeah, yeah. I eat muktuk yet and dry fish and caribou meat. I don't eat the caribou. I never eat the uh, meat uh, raw. I only eat it frozen. A big difference there, you know. Yeah, and sometimes I eat raw muktuk. Yeah, and more than ninety percent of the time it's cooked. You know. Yeah, and sometimes we have frozen caribou to eat, frozen fish just like that. It's like a sushi. You know, sort of thing. Yeah, it tastes very good. And we have the oil, oil from the uh, oil blubber for dip. We still do that today. And the muktuk is, that's the fatty part of the beluga whale. Yeah. 
These lamps were traditionally lit yeah. with seal, you actually, seal you oil. You actually could make one yourself. It doesn't have to be soapstone or anything. You could use a metal plate and cotton as long as you have their oil. Yeah. Some sort. You can have light of your own when you're traveling in the dark. Oh, you know? yeah. yeah. And if you run out of seal oil, that's yeah. when they use yeah, the Yeah, you can use maloga oil or corn oil or, or anything. You know, yeah. Could burn yeah. some potato chips. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. if you have the Arctic cotton. Yeah. 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 I'll have to grab some Arctic cotton on the way down. Yeah, yeah. This is John, and I'm here at Grandma's Kitchen, and he's got something interesting for me to try. Tell me about this. This is whale. It's actually the skin of the whale. It, it's loaded with vitamin C and D and nutrients. And this here is the meat. We, so, make, we make jerky out of the meat. So this is the beluga whale. The beluga whale, yes. Okay, and I'm going to try some of this. And you're going to be amazed how good it is. All right, let's give it a go. Please, Brian. Okay. Um. <coughs> All right. Try it out. Just chew the whole thing. Whole thing? Hmm. It's chewy. Got another customer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Love how I'm sharing with them lucky again. Guy. Yeah, we're so lucky yeah, it's, you're it's there like to a, share. <laughs> Sharing is caring. Yeah, hmm. exactly. It's kind of like a chewy, meaty sort of. We're gonna go try and dip our toes. Texture. Oh yeah, just um, dip your toes. Right yeah. A little yeah. bit fatty of a taste, kind of a. Yeah, okay. it's kind of hard to describe. Let's try some of this uh, meat. Meat here. We make jerky out of the meat. So this is the beluga jerky, essentially, right? Yeah. Really good. It's actually pretty good. It's really good. It's good. And healthy for Like a too. jerky, like a but just richer and very tasty. Not processed. Yeah, it's pure. It's just it's right out, you know, from right out of the sea here. And this is the muck the muck tuck here. Muck tuck. Now nah, that's a little more chewy. A little bit of an oily taste, but kind of more fat. Whereas the other one is drier, the jerky. It's pretty good though. And people can eat the muck tuck. Oh. Some people eat it raw, right? Yes, absolutely. And some people like it cooked. And this is my very first time ever eating muck tuck. And mipko. And mipko. Mipko, the meat. Mipko is the meat. Yeah, thank you, John, for... You're welcome. Thank you so much. You can see the white. So that's the color of the skin of the beluga whale. It has another layer of skin that we peel off when we cook it. Yeah. Kind of like human skin. Right. Like our own skin, we peel off the top of it when we cook it. Okay. So this is kind of like the under layer of skin. It's, it's, it's like the, the original... Their skin, really, it has a thin layer of skin like human skin that we peel off and cook it. And often see blue whales out here rolling around in a, on a beach in the shallow parts, uh, scraping off their skin. A layer, a thin layer that I peeled off of that. You see them out here once in a while. Just right out, right out there. Out oh here. Shallows in the... Uh, Reefs on the reefs, they go roll around on the reefs and they scrape some of their skin off. We're sitting here by the bay, muktuk and beer. It's life is good. You don't get any better than this, Jack. That's right. You all come back now. You hear? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a parka right here, and what's around the edge here? This is Wolverine, and the reason they like Wolverine the best is because it never freezes to the face, and it insulates well. And this is about 40, 40 geese here. And this is all down with about 40, 40, 40 geese? 40 geese, yes. 40 geese or so, all in this parka here. 
So this is what keeps you warm here in the winter. And these right here, these are wolf mitts. And these help keep you warm in the winter as well. As you can see, they're pretty thick. So you're Robert Molokach Grubin. And you found all kinds of stuff. What did you find? I find, I believe what my point of view is, <clears throat> that I could see the white men coming to our country long before. I, I'm a skilled hunter. I, I, I know the water and the land. I'm not trying to say I'm better than anybody. I know better than anybody. I've just been doing it all my life. So I'm, I'm immune to the water and the whales and the polar bears and the, and the game. So anyway, I go north of here, about 100 kilometers north. <clears throat> I found these artifacts on a beach where they're unreal. They even got nipples on them. And they're wrapped in cloth in a rock. So I'm really amazed what I, I found. I think it's the only one in the world that I found. So I'm very interested in showing it to the world. And like yourself, knowing somebody that does stuff like that is very cool. And we shall see my artifacts. And you, you found a shipwreck? The mass is still there out of wood. It's pretty cool. And I found the, um, the spears that they push off the ice to go in between the ice at the time. Oh, yeah? And I believe the Eskimos um, found a shipwreck before anybody else. And they make tools out of the same tools. How do we make out a bone? Like the harpoon heads. So we got a lot of steel off the white man one time. They found a shipwreck before us, but the stuff is still there. I would like to do more research. And I found something and I treasure, kind of treasure it right now. It's very beautiful. It sparkles. It's got a gold chain wrapped around a stone. I have no idea what it is. And the, that chain is gold. gold. When you put it out in the sun, you can see the diamond inside. It's very amazing. I've shown my mother, she got scared of it, it was so amazing. It was very, uh, very untouchable sort of thing. So I want to show it to the world. I would love to show it to you. That'd be cool. Mm -hmm. Could you show it to me? Yep, so jump in my truck and we'll scattle do look around and I'll show you what I do all my life. I've been living here. I'm 52 years old now. And you know, I still love hunting and I still got to drive. I'll be doing that till I die. And you, you, you were saying you provide caribou for oh, the community? For the community. Yeah. All the elders in town, much as I can, between me and God, through the ocean and the land. So everything is accounted for, right? That's what I've learned. I've had a hard life. We're all born places where we have no choice where to live. So basically, I live right close to the ground and I'm immune to it. And I'm close to God now, which is really good. And meeting people like you coming to our little town, we just got a highway four years ago, and you get to see people. That's really amazing, you're different people. I just met you, and you seem like a guy that is good to meet, and all this time you're uh, a YouTube man. So that's cool, man, coming to my Eskimo town. Yeah. I'm like the Muhammad Ali, Muhammad Ali of the polar bears. Robert told me that back in the day, it wasn't uncommon to send a teenage boy alone out on a snowmobile with a rifle to hunt a polar bear many miles out on the sea ice. It was a rite of passage that he achieved. He might have taken food and a few other essentials and wouldn't return until he had shot the bear and hauled it back. It's a pleasure to meet you. Good to meet you. All right, well, let's go check out this thing. So Robert found something he's going to show us he's right got a now. Nipple. He's not sure exactly what it is. Um, but it, it appears to be something that maybe was what lost uh, off a ship or something or What do you think? I can see the gold and I know what pool's gold is. I've, I got lots of pool's gold. This ain't fool's gold I've, I've seen lots. I've, I see a I see a gold necklace wrapped around to some kind of a ruby wrapped right around You could you could see the You could see the gold chain here and you can see the threads of it wrapped right around. 
So if anybody out there has any idea what this is exactly, please let me know in the comments. That would be so amazing. When I put it in the sun, I could see it just sparking like a diamond. So, wow, it's very, very amazing find. Very amazing, especially with the nipple. And you can see the black gold and this, but I don't know what's the stone inside. For now, oh. my prayer rock, because it fits just perfect in my palm. And when I do pray, everything seems to be falling into place. My mind goes into the land and sea with the animals, even to people if I wanted to. I can make them think what I'm thinking, which is really smooth and very enjoyable and very lovable. I wish everybody had that. But for now, I'm going to find out what it is. What you got there, Robert? I found this about 70 kilometers north of here. And I believe it's... I found it where our Eskimo village used to be. So right on a beach would be an igloo, an old igloo. And I found a whole bunch of steel stuff. I believe that uh, our ancestors at one time cleaned out some white people's ship. I believe around 18... For my wild guess, like 1870. This was like something they used to push the ice flows away, right? This would this be like a chisel to push in front of the boat to push the ice off. And I found lots of steel, a lot of steel parts all over. So I'm very interesting in finding out what, where it came from. And if you look inside, you can see the wood, where the wood was. There was like a stick. There will be more with Robert and what else he's found, but first let's have a look around town. Most of the houses in Tuck are modest and functional and built upon pilings since the ground is permafrost. requested permission to film the underground ice house, a freezer dug deep into the permafrost that stores food for the locals. Unfortunately, I was denied entry. It's a throwback to the old days when this was a more common practice. Nowadays, it's mainly for storing dog food, such as fish. They used to maintain individual ice houses, but that's now a fading art. Our Lady of Grace Church. Let's see if we can have a quick peek inside. Here's a look at the inside of the church. Which one's the real dog? Those big white balls out there were part of the distant early warning system during the Cold War. That's the school there. On September 3rd, 1995, Metallica and other popular bands flew into Tuck and played a concert as a publicity event for Molson Brewing Company to promote their new ice brewed beer and put Tuck on the map in the world of pop culture. This led to Metallica providing funding for the Jason Jacobson Youth Center that's here today. You could say the center was built on rock and roll. If you want to park beside the ocean, the Arctic Ocean here, by one of these picnic tables, apparently it's $63 a night. These were all together, even with, even with this, uh... <laughs> oh yeah. That was in there with these, because they, that's why I believe they got robbed. <laughs> and so the, these are uh, Eskimo tools. Yeah that robbed white people long ago. That's what I believe. Really cool spear. Spear point. Still mint condition. Yes, yeah, turn it this way so everybody can kind of see. Okay. See the, like, the spear tip. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Robert carved this. What's this stone here? Brazilian. This is Robert's grandfather, Eddie, and uh, he went from an orphan to a millionaire. And started with a dog team. Started with a dog team. Now we got rock trucks doing $700,000 a piece rock trucks from one body job. So Robert was telling me he supplies caribou meat for the community. So tell us about that, Robert. I started hunting when I was 14 when I ordered a, owned a fishnet. 
from there, business went on. I guess saw it now. But yeah, this is what I do for a living. Or well, I sort of do for a living, maybe a hobby now. The support uh, community with caribou meat and whatever they want. Try. This is a caribou skin right here. Yep. And that's that's actually an Arctic fox up top, the white fox. And that's a really rare one over there. It's a half cross, half silver the, uh, on the left there. Oh, the, there. oh the and that's a rare, rare wolverine too. It's really white. And that's a really nice dark one. That's a blue wolf up there. And there's a black wolf above you. So that's pretty cool too. A black wolf up yeah, here? Yeah, it was like, took me 30 years to find one of these guys. The blue wolf too. Took me like 30 years to find that. Here's a shot of some unusual horns from a caribou. And this is also another very strange kind of horn going on here. I like the way the... And way up in tuk tuk that's pretty... Pretty cool. It's very amazing. Alien horns. Alien horns. Never caught before. In the history of... Very strange. The uh, history of uh, Eskimos. Robert does carvings and this is a musk ox horn and he's in the process of carving a polar bear as you can see there and the rest will be a seal. You can rent out a kayak from Robert. And you might even be able to get some fresh fish at some point. And these are the antlers of caribou. Robert was telling me that occasionally grizzly bears and polar bears come into town and wander around. He said one time a polar bear came in, wandered around a bit, and then he went out to the dock and he jumped back into the icy water and swam away. Unlike the typical visitor to Tuck, who might spend one day there and then turn around and go back to Inuvik, I spent nearly a week. One reason was waiting for the rain to come and the wind so that it could blow the smoke out and I could see everything I missed on the way up north. The other reason was so that I could get to know the people a little bit and learn a bit about the culture. The Tuck Airport was named after Robert's grandfather, Eddie Grubin. Boone Dock and added what appears to be a little finger of salt water, little inlet there. Tonight I'll be sleeping inside of Robert's house and sleeping on a caribou skin, laying my sleeping bag down on top of it. Caribou steak sandwiches. So that's the caribou meat right there. On my last night here in Tuck, I slept here in Robert's house. He just slept over at his mom's house, which is just a short stone's throw away. And slept on the caribou skin down on the floor there with a nice little ocean view. Most of us might perceive life in the Arctic as harsh, and it can be. It's simply a different way of life, one of surviving, and one of the most brutal environments on Earth. The people of the Arctic don't see animals as the cute, cuddly, and furry creatures that many of the rest of us do. They see obtaining the meat and skins of the animals as an avenue to their survival. He's gonna do a little drum here. <laughs> Maybe we should take the good examples from the people of the north, sharing and caring about each other, like Robert, providing caribou for the village, or like the ladies of the fish camp on my way up the Dempster, who don't sell their traditional food, but share it with others. It may seem removed from the ills of society, but humans bring kindness and stupidity wherever they go. Someone stole something from Robert's house while I was out filming, he said. No place is perfect. There's a fair degree of tobacco and alcohol addiction. Life up here can be harsh to the rest of us, but to the people who grew up here, it's home. I've been down to this most southerly point in the South Island of New Zealand. As I sometimes say, I've been to the ends of the earth and a few places in between. I hope you enjoyed exploring Tuk to Yuk Tuk and meeting people who live there. Don't forget to give me a like on the video, share, and subscribe. Until next time, this is Rockhopper. I'll see ya. <laughs>